Okay, let's go one step further. Now we've been explaining systems of linear equations in terms of this black box. This black box produces a linear function. So we have the two variables, which we can call a single vector variable, and we apply this black box, which is expressed as a matrix, and here is the output. So, question, suppose we put one black box after the other. Suppose we take the output of a black box and feed that into another black box. This is called uh, composition of functions. It means I'm doing one, I'm doing one function first and then the other one. Now what's going to happen? What's the result? Well, we can do the computation step by step. Here, if my input is xy, and my function is expressed by this matrix 2648, remember that the output is the columns in the matrix times the variables. So it's 2, 4 times x plus 6, 8 times y. But now suppose I take this output and feed it into this one here. Right? Then what happens? Then still the output's going to be a linear combination of the columns of this matrix, but this time the coefficients in the combination are here. Not x and y, but 2x plus 6y, 4x plus 8y. Okay, so the first column here is multiplied by 2x plus 6y. The second column, 2, 1, is multiplied by 4x plus 8y. And here we get a result. And notice that this result here could be written like this, like this, can be expressed as the product of a single matrix times xy. I can consider this as 10, 4 times x plus 22 to 8 times y. So I express it by this matrix 10, 4, 22, 8. So this is what we call matrix multiplication. Okay. All right. So in the picture, 2, 6, 4, 8 comes first and 1, 2, 0, 1 comes second. Um, however, when we do the matrix multiplication, we put the 2, 6, 4, 8 second and the 1, 2, 0, 1, 1, 2, 0, 1 first, and we'll see why we do that in a moment. So let me reemphasize that point. Here, look at this matrix 2, 6, 4, 8 is on the left, here it's on the right. Here 1, 2, 0, 1 is on the right, here it's on the left. So when you write it as a product of matrices, you reverse the order. And there's a re there is a very good reason for that, and you'll, and you'll see, well, we're going to see right away. Suppose I have one function from u to v and another function from v to w. All right, that means f takes values in u to the set v, and g takes values in the set v to w. Now, if I take g composed f, in other words, I take f first and then g, that's the same as g composed f. I take f of x. And then I take g of that, so we call that g composed f of x. Right? We can also write it this way. Now notice that here the f came first and the g came second. But here when I write it this way, I write g of f of x. f is first, g is second, because the f is inside the parentheses. So you've seen this before, that when you compose functions, you do write them in reverse order. The initial function is on the right, the subsequent function is on the left. Okay, so let's go down and look at the next section. Okay, so you can see that we've seen that linear functions and matrices have a close connection. So let's explore that connection. Matrices get involved in linear algebra when notational choices are made. All right, so what does that mean? Let's look at this example. All right, here we have an equation, ddx plus 2 times f is equal to x plus 1. I said ddx plus 2 times f. Really, we should think of this as a linear function operating on f. Because, of course, you don't multiply ddx times f. You take ddx of f. So this is a linear function operating on the set of functions. All right? Now, let's restrict our functions to the set of quadratic polynomials. That means that I can write my function as ax squared plus bx plus c. All right? So I can represent ax squared plus bx plus c as a column vector abc. All right, so that's just an easier way. I don't need to write the x squared and the x, but it contains the same information. All right. 
And I'm saying B here because this is a particular choice. I could choose something different. And we'll see later, if we choose something different, we get a different result. All right, now, what happens when I apply ddx plus 2 to this quadratic function, which I'm representing as ABC? All right, now, ABC is just a representation for ax squared plus bx plus c. I'm just going to replace that back in. Now we go ahead and take the derivative, and we use the linearity rules. Uh, here we can take the derivative operating on uh, ax squared, uh, and the derivative we can take the, first the derivative operating on ax squared plus bx plus c, and then take 2 times ax squared plus bx plus c. So this is the derivative of ax squared plus bx plus c, 2ax plus b, and here is 2 times ax squared plus bx plus c. Now we group the terms together to have like coefficients of x, and this is what we get. Now we can also write this now as a matrix, because uh, we have a quadratic polynomial, and the coefficients depend on the original variables a, b, and c. Let's look at the first coefficient, 2a. That depends only on a. So here we could write this as 2a plus 0b plus 0c. 2a plus 0b plus 0c. That's expressed right here. 2a plus 0b plus 0c. Now, recall that we are putting in this vector the first number is the coefficient of ax squared. This abc represents ax squared plus bx plus c. So 2ax squared, the 2a should be the first coefficient of my column vector representation of this polynomial. And that's what we have here. If I multiply this matrix times this vector, I get 2a. Let's look at the same, let's look at the second uh, vector uh, component. This is 2a plus 2b, b right here, 2a plus 2b. How can I write that as a matrix vector uh, product? Well, this is 2a plus 2b. I can write that as 2 times a plus 2 times b. You see that? So I have this second component agrees with the second component here. Here I have b plus c, and b plus c agrees with here, b plus c. This 1 multiplies the b, the 2 multiplies the c, and of course the 0 multiplies the a. All right? So what I have here is a matrix representation of this linear function. If I have a polynomial, quadratic polynomial, and I want to know what ddx plus 2 of that quadratic polynomial is, all I need to do is write down the coefficients of the polynomial, multiply it by this matrix, and voila, I'm done. Okay? So this uh, equation here, as far as quadratic polynomials is concerned, is equivalent to this matrix equation. And that's given us a way of organizing this system of equations. Right? Why do I have 0, 1, 1 on this side? Well, because x plus 1, using my notational convention of x squared coefficient, x coefficient, and constant coefficient, then x plus 1 is represented by this vector 0, 1, and 1. So here I actually have a, solution, a system of three equations which I can solve. Even if I don't know calculus, I can solve this, and I can get a solution. Well, actually, you had to use calculus to get this matrix in the first place, so you're not getting something for nothing. All right? Now, the point that uh, is made in, this, in the book is that you can always do this, or you, can, you often do this with linear functions to make things easier to solve. I can take a linear equation, LU equals V, and this U can be any type of vector. It can be functions, it can be polynomials, it can be anything. And I can translate this into a matrix equation. All right? This matrix equation is always very easy to solve. There are standard ways of doing that. All right? And then uh, if I want to get the solution to the original equation, I just go backwards. And here it says reverse of convention. So I just associate my solution, my solution x to the vector u in this representation that it corresponds to. Same way up here, when I got this solution for my system of equations, I know that that's 0 plus 1 half x plus 1 fourth times a constant. So that, that way I was able to find this solution, 1 half x plus 1 fourth, to the equation ddx plus 2 
of f is equal to x plus 1. All right? So I'm able to do that. You can say I go round Robin Hood's barn. I, make a, I translate this into a mathematical language I'm familiar with, and I know how to solve this system of equations, and then I translate back again. This, by the way, this is called a commutative diagram, and it's very common in mathematics. Very, very common. Okay. All right. So in this case, we have a d, the derivative of the polynomial is equal to 3. This has been translated into a matrix form. You can check that this matrix corresponds to the derivative operation on quadratic polynomials. And this 3 corresponds to the vector 0, 0, 3. If I use this notation, ax squared plus bx plus c goes to abc, right? In this case, uh, there's no x squared, so a equals 0. No, no x, so b equals 0. And there's a constant coefficient 3, so c equals 3. So that's where I get the 0, 0, 3. I solve this equation using my uh, matrix vector solution methods. And then I know that the solution, uh, 0, 3, 0, uh, goes back to 3x, because that's how I associate polynomials to vectors. Okay? Simple example. In this case, it's not quite necessary, but you see how it works in general. All right now, one thing important to notice is that this is not the only way to associate a matrix with the linear function. Okay? Here, instead of having um, ax squared plus bx plus c uh, as abc, Notice that now the x squared coefficient is on the bottom. The x squared x coefficient is in the middle, and the constant coefficient is on the top. So here I have AX, a plus bx plus cx squared this way. Now, just to remind you of the difference, here it was ax squared plus bx plus c. Reverse order. In this case, the x squared coefficient is on the top. In this new case, the x squared coefficient is on the bottom. Now, is this second way invalid? No, it's not. Because you can choose uh, many different ways to represent this polynomial as a column vector. In fact, these are only two possibilities. There are many more. Right. So, uh, if we do the same problem this way, we obtain a different matrix representing this linear function. Okay. We still get this same result when we take the derivative, but now the 2a plus b is the first component and not the last component. And the 2b plus 2c is the same. The 2c is the last component and not the first component. So I get a different matrix here, but I can go through the same procedure. If I go through the same procedure and solve, you will end up with the very same answer when you translate it back into polynomials. It's kind of like translating uh, French into English, French into English and then back again, or you could translate French into Russian, and then back again. You get, you still, if your translation is good, if your translation is perfect, you'll get the, transla you'll translate back perfectly. But the intermediate stage is different. So in this case, you have different intermediate calculations, but the final result is the same. So that's comforting. It doesn't really matter how you change the linear function into a matrix as long as you're consistent. Okay, that's it.